Hello everybody and welcome back to another lesson with me, Miss Martins. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at electron configuration, electron notation, sp notation, it all means the same thing, and outbow diagrams or orbital diagrams. So this is a section of chemistry that we do cover in grade 10 and in order to understand these diagrams and these notations we need to go back and look at electrons what that means where we find them so let's have a look so you should be familiar with the periodic table of elements which you can see behind me you know that the periodic table is structured in a very special way if you look at the periodic table you can see that the electrons are ordered according to their atomic numbers you see we have one for hydrogen two for helium three for lithium, four for beryllium, and so on. That little number that I am highlighting there has a spe very special name, and on your periodic table over here, you'll see that it says atomic number. Now, you need to know what that atomic number refers to. The atomic number, the little number, the small number on your periodic table, which happens to be on the top of my element here, so 11 in the case of sodium, that is called the atomic number and it refers to the number of protons within the nucleus of the sodium atom. It also refers to the number of electrons in a neutral atom. So not an ion, in an atom. So by looking at the periodic table, I can see that sodium has 11 electrons. Now we know that an atom looks as follows. We have the nucleus in the middle and within the nucleus we have the positive protons and the neutral, which means they don't have a charge, neutrons. That's in the nucleus. Surrounding the nucleus we have things called energy levels and within the energy levels we have orbitals. And it's in the orbitals around the nucleus where we find the electrons. It's very important to note that electrons don't move around the nucleus randomly. They occupy very specific areas and like I said those are energy levels and in the energy levels we have orbitals where we find our electrons and looking at these orbitals and in which orbitals we find which electrons we can write down the electron configuration or we can draw an orbital or alpha diagram to show in which orbitals we find which electrons so here's another diagram that illustrates exactly what I'm saying we have our nucleus in the middle, as you can see over here. This is my nucleus, let's highlight it. There we go, there's my nucleus. And around the nucleus, we have energy levels. So this represents energy level one, then energy level two, then energy level three, and so on. Within each energy level, so we go the nucleus, we're gonna start at the bottom, then we have energy level one, two, three, four, and so on. We write our diagram like that because the nucleus comes first and then outside the nucleus we have energy level one then two then three then four i hope that makes sense within these energy levels we have atomic orbitals where we can find electrons atomic orbitals look like this and we'll be focusing on the s orbital which is above my head over here which is spherical in shape we also have the p orbital which you can see in the middle there are d orbitals and there are f orbitals, but we do not learn about them at school level. As I mentioned, s orbitals are spherical. They can hold a maximum of two electrons. p orbitals look like this, and they usually come in threes. With each little circle, or each sphere, essentially, of the p orbital holding two. So we've got two, four, six. So in a p orbital, in total, we can hold six electrons. The other thing that you need to know is that energy level 1 only has an s orbital. Energy level 2, energy level 3, and so on, they have an s and a p orbital. Remember, d and f orbitals, d and f, also come into play, but we do not deal with them. So we learn energy level 1 has an s orbital. Energy level 2 has an s orbital and a p orbital. Energy level 3 has an s orbital and a p orbital. So it looks something like this. If you can see on the diagram, there in the middle we have the nucleus, which contains the positive protons and the neutral neutrons. 
outside of that, we have, I don't know if you guys can see it, I'm gonna use yellow to highlight it. We have the energy level one, the S orbital. Remember, energy level one only has an S orbital. Then we have energy level two, which has an S orbital, which I'm doing in green over there. And it has the P orbital, which I'm circling over there. Okay, that's basically it. And then if you look at the big circle, this is energy level three, the S orbital. Now you don't have to worry about being able to draw a diagram like this. You just have to worry about drawing an alpha diagram. And alpha diagrams look like this. We'll get back to this in a second. I just need to make sure that you understand that an S orbital is spherical, just one little circle. It can hold two electrons in total. And how we show those electrons are with arrows like this. An arrow pointing up and an arrow pointing down. We do this because of Pauli's exclusion principle, which states that an orbital, so my circle here, my S orbital, can hold a maximum of two electrons so one, two arrows, and they must spin or they must point in opposite direction. So I have one arrow pointing up, the arrow, other arrow pointing down. Okay, so my S orbital, two electrons. My P orbital, remember I said they come in threes, and each orbital can hold one electron. So in total, six. Two in this one, two in this one, and two in this one. Remember they must point in opposite directions. So now that we know that, we can take a look at how to draw the alpha diagram or the orbital diagram. You will always draw the alpha diagram starting with energy level one at the bottom. Remember, energy level one, you see this is energy level one, only has an S orbital. You see I drew a red block around energy level one. That's just to show you that that is one energy level. And I even wrote next to it that it only has an S orbital. Then above that, we have energy level two. You can see there, the two and the two. Remember, energy level two has an S orbital, one circle, and a P orbital, three circles. So that means that energy level two can hold a maximum of eight electrons. Okay. When that is full, we move on to energy level three. Energy level three also has an S orbital and a P orbital. So maximum eight electrons. Then we go to energy level four. And we won't ask you beyond energy level four S because there's a D orbital that fits in over here and we do not do D orbitals. So I'm gonna show you how we actually complete a diagram like this for a very specific atom. If I ask you to draw the alpha diagram for the sodium atom, the first thing you're gonna do is look at your periodic table and you're gonna say, okay, cool, I found sodium and I can see that it has 11 electrons. 11 electrons in total. Then we're gonna start at the bottom, we're gonna draw our alpha diagram. The number of energy levels and orbitals we need depends on the atom. So you can draw the whole diagram and then just erase what you don't need, or you can draw as you're going along. Okay, so I just have the whole thing copied and pasted here. I'm gonna show you how it works. So we need to fill in 11 electrons. We start at energy level one. We go one, two. Remember they must point in opposite directions. Three, four. Then when we get to the P orbital, the rule is that each orbital needs to be filled first, and then we go back and start over. So what I mean is we've got four so far, we go five, six, seven, and then back to the beginning, eight, nine, 10. Then we have one more electron, so that's up here, 11. Do you see that I did not use the rest of my diagram? So what I can actually do is I can remove that from my answer. You can scratch it out, you can erase it. There we go. This is the complete alpha diagram for the sodium atom. And how you would do the sp notation is very simple. The sp notation is also called the electron configuration. Electron configuration. Very big words, but very simple process. So what we do is we start at energy level one. And you guys are going to tell me, okay, Energy level one, orbital S has two electrons. Then we go to two, energy level two. Orbital S has two electrons. So you told me about that one, you told me about that one. Then we go energy level two, P has six electrons. Energy level three, S has one electron. And that is your SP notation or your electron configuration. Let's see if you can do one by yourself. 
So try the alpha bar diagram and the SP notation or electron configuration for the sulfur atom. I'll show you the periodic table in case you need it. Here's the periodic table. Look out for sulfur. Let's try it. If you haven't done it, I hope you at least pause your screen to try it. So sulfur, if you look on the periodic table, as I mentioned, has over here, there's sulfur, has 16 electrons. So sulfur has 16 electrons. That's just a symbol to illustrate electrons. So we're going to start from the bottom. We're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and then we start again, 16. This one we can erase. That's it. Your sp notation or electron configuration would be 1s, I have two electrons, 2s, I have two electrons, 2p, I have six electrons, 3s, I have two electrons, and 3p, I have one, two, three, four electrons. And that is how you do the alpha diagram or the orbital diagram and the electron configuration diagram um, or sp notation for an atom. If you want to see more of these videos, please let me know in the comments below. In future videos, we can have a look at more examples. We can even do alpha diagrams for ions, which is a different story, slightly different. Let me know what else you want to see in the comments. Don't forget to give this video um, a thumbs up for me. It will really help me. Um, and also if you could share it with your friends so that I can help as many of you as possible.